until we compare them to the power of God. And there's something about the power of God that raises us up, that doesn't allow us to, to wallow in our, our, our shame and our pity and our, our lack of self-worth. God is able to raise us up. I'm saying that God is able to raise you up. I'm saying that God can use you. I'm saying that if God is God, if his power is in your life, that he can do whatever he chooses to do in your life. I'm saying that you matter. I'm saying that God's power is able to use you. I'm saying don't allow the experiences and things of your life to limit what God does in your life and through your life. I'm saying that God's power matters. That's what I'm saying. His power matters. We can't, we can't act like it doesn't make a difference. It makes a difference in our lives. Without his power, then I've got a whole long list of reasons why I can't do a lot of things for his kingdom. But when his power lifts me up, and when his power rejuvenates me and gives me the word to speak, it's something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I'll tell you what, I've got it. I'm telling you tonight, his power matters. He said, you will receive power. He didn't say you're going to receive the Holy Ghost and you won't have power. He said you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And so we have power. He has put all things under our feet because we're in Christ. And if we're in Christ, we're able to tread upon scorpions and serpents and they can't hurt us. We're able to have victory over the enemy. We're able to be born again and not down by what we were born into because when we are born again, we're born into the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. The power of God matters. And that's why we should expect something to happen. That's why I should expect things to be different statistically and also miraculously inside the church in the body of Christ. We shouldn't expect to, that you got to reach a certain age. you got to wait till you're at least 46 before you can be used of God. And then, then you can't be used of God past 63. That's not kind of God that we serve. You see, the Bible is filled with all kind of people that God used in various ages. And age has no limitation in the eyes of God because it's the same spirit. And if he's able to raise up from the dead, surely he can use those that are on the verge of dying. I'm saying that God's power matters. It matters in all of our lives. And we can't pretend like it doesn't matter. We can't allow the enemy to persuade us that it doesn't matter. It matters. You have power in your mouth. You have promise in the book. And Lord, help us all when you take the promises that are in the book and use the power that's in your mouth and begin to declare the promises of God for you and your family and for the church and the world around us. Miracles happen. We got miraculous power when we receive the Holy Ghost. You shall. You will receive power. You shall, you will receive power. But I believe just as well that all scripture in its completeness, if we are going to rejoice over the power of God in our lives when we receive the Holy Ghost, if we're going to receive the promise of God, meaning his word says, I will receive Maybe now is the time to start doing something for the Lord. Maybe, maybe now's the time to open my mouth when I'm at work. Maybe I might just open my mouth when I'm, I'm at school, when I'm shopping. Maybe, maybe the power of God can take me beyond where I'm at. If we're emphatic about the power of God, we have to 
grasp the completeness of his promise. And that is, that wasn't the only shall was given in the scripture. He didn't say you shall receive power only. He said, and you shall be witnesses unto me. We hear a lot about the first shall. But tonight I want to hit on the second shall. If you allow me. I want to talk a little bit about the second part of what you will do as a Christian. If we're going to believe in the promises of God, we might as well go ahead and believe that not only his power will have an impact on my life, but my life will have impact on other people's lives. You might as well get that deep down inside of you. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for you. And for you. He's impacted your life for a purpose. Your purpose is to impact other people's life. He came down as a light and he filled you with light. So now you can be the light in a world full of darkness. You have to understand the second winner is you will be a witness. Not, you know, again, it's not a you might receive power. You could receive power. You maybe, I don't know, depending on the day and the feelings of God, receive power. No, we understand we will receive power. And so the other part is, I might be a witness. No, 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 no. You are a witness. You are a witness. And what I'd love tonight is for us to take both of those. I would like to see some members of the Bible church to be powerful witnesses. Embracing the full promise. That I have the promise of power in the Holy Ghost. And I have a promise that my life will make a difference in this world. You have to catch that. That your life is making a difference in this world. And it is speaking something. I'll explain that in just a second. What I want to bring to you tonight is this simple thought. Lifestyle evangelism. Think about it. Lifestyle Evangelism. Let's, let's don't complicate this. Let's don't try to section this and order it off that it's only those that are called to be an evangelist. But according to the word of God, we're all called to receive it, the promise of the Spirit. And when we receive the promise of the Spirit, we will receive power, miraculous power, that will completely change our lives, but also in return, we will change other people's lives by the life that we live. I'm saying that your life has a voice, is what I'm saying. I'm saying that no matter if you try to mute it or not, no matter if you try to hide it under a bushel, that your life is speaking something. Right. About him. Right. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about lifestyle evangelism. We said that you'll receive power and you'll be witnesses unto me. In other words, the Holy Spirit gives you power and it gives you life. Not only to empower and to change the believer, but rather to demonstrate and to illuminate the gospel to the world. It is to bring about his mission and purpose to the world. It goes back, I remember, at some time, somebody said, I know that we don't say it as often anymore, but something about leading people to Jesus Christ. Just as simple as that. And I know that that, that is so applicable even tonight. It's, that's as simple as it gets, at least. We're leading people towards the light. We're leading people towards Jesus Christ. See, here, here's the thing. We will get so off focus trying to, to try to figure it all out. But we've got to we've got to have it all together, and we don't know how to say this, and we don't really know all of the, the doctrinal scriptures, so we don't want to open our mouth and confuse everybody. We don't want to make a confusion, therefore, we have a 
we have a past right now. We've got a we got a past. We don't have to say anything. We don't we don't really have to speak up at all. But here's the reality: it's never about you. It's never about your intellect. It's never about the fullness of your knowledge. Right. Come in here tonight and have all of the knowledge of the world. Don't fall down. It's all about him. That's right. Here's something. Here, here, take take this down. Here's a note. You don't know enough about it. Do this. This is going to be powerful. It's really, it's really powerful. Lead them to Jesus Christ. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Lead them to Jesus Christ. Let the light shine. You think the, the world's dark? It is dark. But let the light shine. You think it won't matter? Let the light shine. Let the light shine when you go out into the world. Why? Because it's beyond just about us being delivered and set free. But it's also in turn taking the mission of Jesus Christ. And he came to seek and to save those which were lost. We're to take on his mission. What was his prayer request on the earth? What was Jesus's? I mean, you got to take notice of it, don't you? If Jesus has a prayer request, think about it. You got, you got prayer service. Jesus is over there, got his hand up. Don't you think somebody... Uh, Jesus, we don't do this. We don't do individuals anymore. But I uh, think uh, Jesus, what you got a prayer request? What you, what you got? Wow. Uh, pray ye that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into the harvest. That's what the prayer request was. And can I tell you a little something? You are the answer to Jesus's prayer request. I said, you are the answer to his prayer request. That means, Jared, you are a laborer. You are called to go out and make a difference and let the light shine. We are called to make a difference. If we're to reflect Jesus Christ and we represent how great he is, but yet we live a life that's so small and doesn't matter, what does that say about him? Let me put it another way. We talk about a God that is able to deliver. Well, he's a delivering God. And I believe that strongly. But what kind of witness would it be if those that I work with saw me still bound in, in sin? Come on. After all these years, I'm still bound. I'm living in sin. I'm not talking about single actions of sin. We're all human. But I'm talking about a lifestyle of sin. You tell me what kind of gospel that speaks to them. If, if, for some reason, people watch the way that we lived, if people were to look at us and we were the gospel to the world, what if your life was the gospel of Jesus Christ? I know you want to reject that. I can tell. Feel it. It's okay. What kind of gospel do you have? Is it weak? Does it, does it, it's seeker friendly. It doesn't challenge anybody to change. In fact, I'll tell you what, my gospel, I just blend in with you. You won't even know I'm around. My light's so bright, I'll turn it off. Then nobody even know it's there. Think about that. Think about if you just live your life without ever turning the light off. Think about if you always put it off with someone else. They got a special gift. Oh, they're great evangelists. Think about it. Oh, it's always, oh, we've got to get that person involved. It's always someone else. It has to be another group and team of, you know, they go out and really get after it when it's talking about reaching out and door knocking. Well, what if, what if the gospel was more personal? What if that you have friends that no one will ever be able to contact? Yeah, that's what if you're the only Christ that they ever see? It's just so What do you think about it? What do you think about it? the obligation that we have? It's more than just me coming to church and feeling the power. I'm just burdened right now when I take up the opportunities and I'm just going to be transparent. 
You see, we overlook the opportunities. I'm telling you, we overlook them. I promise you, if you pray to God and ask Him to open the door on a day, He will answer that particular day. But it's disguised because we have become so used to deafening it. We've become so used to hearing the pain of others. We have become so used to seeing tragedy. We've become so used to things happening around us. And we're so numb when we do not respond. I'm speaking on a personal level. But then we begin to pray and say, God, if you open the door today, I'm going to step through it. And all of a sudden, somebody mentions I'm having a tough time. You don't know who they are. You know what that means? That means they need somebody to share Jesus with them. You know what that means? They need somebody to be Christ in their life. Do you think that Jesus Christ would ignore Think about it. Do you think that Jesus Christ would ignore Do you think that he would turn his back on him? Knowing that it's right there. I don't believe he would. We are to have the attitude of Christ. And there is a power that comes. I'm telling you, I have experienced it more in the last couple of months than I have ever experienced it in my life. You pray it. And I want to challenge you tonight. I challenge you to ask God to open the door. I challenge you to say these words. If you open the door, Lord, I will do whatever you tell me to do. I challenge you to do that. I'm telling you, I am challenging you to live a life of evangelism. I'm challenging you to set people free. Meaning if they're bound and if somehow God has directed them near your way, don't ignore it. Take the opportunity. You can ask them politely. You know, that really stirred me. That really touched my heart. I don't want to impose. But do you mind if I pray for you right now? That's all you have to say. Now, I don't have the right to know all of the different dynamics of evangelism. I'm not the right person, but what I can tell you is the last few months, and I've just seen one of the person. I stopped by and saw her just a couple hours ago on my way from Bloomington. One of those moments two months ago of hearing, hearing her, hearing the pain her daughter that lives in her estate, hearing the words about she's worried about her daughter because of cancer. She's worried about her daughter because she's trying so hard to keep the marriage together, but the guy's not being faithful. And she doesn't know what to do. And I felt in my heart, and I knew if I disobeyed him, I was good. If I ignored it, I was going to disobey. And it's so hard the first time, I'm just, just going to tell you. All I can tell is the last couple of months I've been able to do this, and it's changing. And I'm, like, I'm embracing it as it goes. And I'm still hesitant in time. But the power that comes, it doesn't have to be in the church service. Right, right, that's right. You have power. I'm saying you have Holy Ghost power That's right. to unlock yes. the prison doors yes. of people. Something happens when you take a moment to acknowledge God. Something shifts. I'm telling you, something happens. I can't explain it before that moment. I'm telling you, it's scary. Times. Oh. <laughs> But I'll tell you if you'll be obedient to Christ and you'll be obedient to his ways, there will be an outbreak of revival that this church has never had. I'm telling you, there will be an outbreak of God's spirit like you have never, ever seen. Now, I, I know 
that you can say, well, you've not been around long enough. I understand that. And you can throw any number you want at me. Say it. 400, 600, 800, 1,000. Keep going. 5,000. Name the number. What's the greatest? I'm telling you, God is able to reach more than that if we will be obedient. In the early church, the first day, 120 people just having a prayer meeting, trusting God, Holy Ghost falls, they began to worship God, and before the end of that day, 3,000 more people were added. What am I saying? I'm talking about you are the prayer of all the saints before us. You are the answer to that. If you will dare to live a lifestyle of evangelism. I'm saying that if you will get a hold of that in your mouth is promises. We hear them on Sundays and Wednesdays that you can make a difference. I'm saying that in your schools, if you will open your mouth, that God is able to change your school. And he will use you if you're willing to open your mouth. I'm saying that if we will open our mouths, that God will empower us to do the work that is needed to be done. I'm saying that God is able Amen. to transform lives. I know it's, it's, it's so easy right now. It's so easy. It's so comfortable because you kind of know where you're going to sit. I know it's so easy and I like it too. I like it because you kind of know where you're going to sit. I mean, you just kind of do, but I'll tell you what the will of God is. We got to come in at least an hour or two hours early because the place is so filled with people seeking God. Can I tell you what the will of God is? I'm talking about drug addicts. I'm not talking about prostitutes. I'm talking about people that, that are shipwrecked in this world that are looking for something different. And God is able to set them free. I'm telling you, God is able to move in lives like never before. I'm telling you that maybe some of the greatest voices that will come from this, this, this church, I'm talking about impacting the world, is ahead of us. I'm saying that there are people that we can win that don't know about him right now, that will transform this world. I'm saying that you can transform your world if you'll dare to believe that your life makes a difference. That your actions matter. That your lifestyle has a volume. It's saying something. But what is it saying? What are you communicating? How much of Christ is other people hearing? How much of Christ do people see in your life? And I'm telling you, it's such a challenge. It's such a challenge. When you think about it, God's promise is real. God's promise is real. The Bible says, you're a epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. People are reading what is written in your heart. By the actions that you portray to them. The Bible also says that neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it the light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I ask you these questions. Is your light hidden? Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Is your life hidden? Does your actions and your lifestyle point people to Jesus Christ? <clears throat> this newfound life that you have since you believed in Christ, does it bring light and life? To others. In other words, what kingdom are you building? I only know that there's one kingdom that will last. 
There's only one foundation that people can build their lives on. There's only one rock that's above all other stabilities in this world that if you place your life and your foundations on it, you can trust it. This is nothing new for us tonight. This is nothing that, that, that you don't know about tonight. But what I'm saying is, do we dare to have a lifestyle of evangelism? Do we dare allow our light to shine? It's not whether we're going to live for God or not. The Bible says in Romans 7, whether we live or whether we die, we live and die with the Lord. That's what it says. And then it goes on to say that one day we're going to have to give an account for how we lived our lives. So if you're, whether you're living or you're dead, you're Christ because he paid once and for all by his own blood. What kind of life are you living into him? What kind of message are you portraying in your life? I, I just want you to know tonight, you can I'm not speaking tonight as someone that's got it all together. I'm not speaking tonight as somebody that has it all figured out. I have not. Because my proof is for all to see. Look around you tonight. Look around on Sunday and look at the proof of your labor. Look at those around you that you have won. Look at those that you have made an impact on. I know you don't see it all now. I understand that. But after, in my case, after all these years, I've made an impact on some. But I can be honest with you, I should have more than I have made. I personally believe, as I grasp this, Sister Silence, that I personally can fill one whole road to the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm just saying from my own personal standpoint, I'm being very vulnerable right now. I believe that as I grab a hold of this and understand how, how serious this is, that my life does matter, how I live it unto the Lord does matter. What I'm doing for the Lord does matter. My spare time does matter. My focus does matter. My prayers I pray does matter. And I believe that I can feel one entire other. I believe that we can make a difference. I believe God has called you to make a difference. With your family. With your friends. At your work. At your school. When you're shopping. When you're on vacation. When you don't feel good. You can make a difference. Why? Because you have received power after you have received the Holy Ghost. But because of that, you also are a witness. And I challenge you tonight, as I come to a close, what kind of witness will we be? What kind of church will we be? Will we care? Will we hear the voices? Will we hear the cries of the soul around us? Will we hear the voices that are there? Or will it be too late? I pray to God that he would saturate us with a desire for soul like we have ever seen before. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that there would be an attitude and a spirit of intercession that would hit our hearts. I tell you, I pray God wakes me up at night if that's what it takes to stir my heart for souls. I pray my soul does not settle down and become comfortable with all of those that are sinking around me. What kind of message does that speak when I know that people are sinking? I know that they're slipping, yet I do nothing. I tell you tonight, I pray this church is headed towards the greatest revival we've ever seen, and that we have fire behind us because God is going to pour out the Spirit even here.
pray for you. the last days. Thank you, Jesus. Will you join with me to be fully committed to the second child, the second will of Acts chapter 1, verse 8? Will you join with me and say, God, I know you've given me power, miraculous power, but God, I know I, I am a witness. And I will be a witness on my job. I will be a witness at home. I will be a witness when I go to school. When I shop groceries, I'm going to be a witness. When somebody cuts me off, driving down the road, I'm going to be a witness. God, I'm going to be a witness. Let me ask you this. What changes can we make in our personal lives that will put a lifestyle evangelism as a top priority? It starts with the focus. It starts with a prayer that says, God, stir my heart. Lord, put a soul Lord, stir my spirit. Lord, change my world. I need it, Lord. Lord, if you can use anything, use me. I want to see revival. I'm telling you, I want to see life change. I want to see people that I don't know change for the kingdom's sake. I want to see shackles let loose on people. I want to see prison doors open spiritually for people. I want where the enemy's taking away their vision. I want God to restore vision. I want God to heal the lame, those that are crippled spiritually, so that they can run for the Lord again. I'm saying I want to see God do work in people's lives. But his greatest work he does in others' lives is the work that he does through us to them. We are his voice. We are his hands. We are his care. We are his body. We could all stand tonight. I feel to the Lord. If it's okay tonight, I think I'd like to, to end this tonight in prayer. I think it would be appropriate. I just tell me. God, it's before I just do it. I'm telling you, God's going to change this. This is, this is way interesting. When we get a hold of this, I'm telling you, you can win the law. I'm telling you, you can make a difference. I'm telling you, His power matters in your life. Yeah. You have to allow him to do it. You have to submit to him. You have to say, Lord, okay, no more fighting. Open up my eyes so I see it. But when you open it up, I'm going to do it, Lord. I'm getting out of the boat. No more of this. I am getting out of the boat. And I promise you, you will see the miraculous happen. You will see God do things that you never could have saw to stay in the boat. I'm telling you, God is ready to turn this city upside down. I'm telling you, God is ready to do a work of soul deliverance and salvation. If you'd like tonight, I open this, this area and find a place that you see. Take a moment tonight to pray to God and say, Lord, stir in my heart, stir in my mind. Lord, I know it's Wednesday night. But Lord, I have a hunger in my heart. But I, I, I want to make a difference. I, I want your spirit to lead me. I want to be a light in darkness. Let's all find a place tonight, if you, if you will. Find a place to, to take just a few moments. Tonight. And let's just touch the Lord for a few moments here tonight. Thank <laughs> you.